if you use Arch Linux or an Arch-based distro, it's very likely you heavily use the AUR. Now, how much depends on the individual user, but if you didn't care about the AUR whatsoever, you'd probably just be using something else. And many people, myself included, even though we very much know we probably shouldn't do this, we sometimes blindly install AUR packages. Now, if at any point we download a malicious package, this could be a pretty serious problem. So if you want to keep yourself safer on the AUR, you can never be perfectly safe, but safer, let's go over some tips that I think are worth following. And I'll go in the order of how I think you should actually approach them. So before even considering downloading the package itself, we need to ask a very simple question. Do we know what the package is? Do we know what we're downloading? Do we trust the upstream? And is it actually worth installing? So when you go to any page on the AUR, it's going to tell you what the upstream URL actually is. This right here is for a project called Show Me The Key. So if we go to the website here, this is gonna take us to a page explaining what the application actually is. And from here, we can get to a GitHub releases page, which is probably going to tell us what the application actually does. So this application will show you the keys you typed on the screen. And maybe we'll do some research on YouTube. Maybe we'll see what other people say about the application before we even consider downloading it. We want to know that we're downloading something that's actually going to be useful. There's no point just downloading something random. And while we're on the package page, we can also see things like the description, a screen key alternative that works under Wayland via lib input. And you might as well check if this matches up with what it says upstream. Now upstream, it says something slightly different, show keys you typed on screen, but I know that screen key is a way to show keys you typed on screen. And it also mentions Wayland and lib input. So let's go and search for those terms. So lib input, okay, it's going to work via lib input, sure. And then Wayland, there is a section here for working with Wayland. So all of that stuff seems like it makes a lot of sense. Now we're going to go into the package build and do a basic examination. We're going to do a bit more in just a bit, but right now I just want to have a look at the source. So source right here is what it's actually going to be downloading. Now there's a couple of sections that are bringing in some variable names. Package name is this one here and package ver is this one here. And this link is going to take us back to the GitHub we were just on. So it seems like that information is lining up like it should. But another thing you should be looking at is where this source is actually coming from. Is it from a known website like a GitHub, a GitLab, the actual website for a project? Or is this some random domain you've never heard of? Is it some Gidea instance some random person made? Is it a random GitLab instance? Which doesn't mean that it is malware at the face of it. But if you are on one of these major platforms, it's very likely they have some sort of malware scanning to deal with those problems. So we know what the project is and we know what we're downloading. But before we go any further, you probably should do this at the start, but if you forgot to do so, make sure you go and check if this package is available in the standard repos. Usually there's going to be an AUR version and a standard repo version. The AUR version is going to be things like a Git version, which is going to be the most up-to-date version. Sometimes it's going to be a fork of the application. And this may be what you are looking for, but if you just want the standard experience, if it's in the standard repos, just go and do that. You won't have any of the problems of using the AUR. It's going to be managed by the Arch team and generally, not always, generally is just going to be safer to work with. Now, I know for a fact that Show Me The Key is only available on the AUR. So we're going to move past this point. Now, I'm not going to say don't use an AUR helper always install packages manually because I use one. I always use an AUR helper. It is a vastly, vastly more convenient way to install AUR packages. Let's say you have a missing dependency. If you're doing a manual installation, you have to go and deal with that manually. And then when it comes to actually updating the packages, the AUR helper 
is just so much easier to work with. So go and use one if you want to. If you don't want to use one, that's totally fine as well. So before we actually install anything, the AUR web interface is going to be your best friend. Now, there are applications to get this information in your terminal as well, but you probably don't have them installed. A lot of those packages are available on the AUR. What you want to be looking for here, besides the things we already looked at, are things like comments. Now, in the case of this package, it doesn't have any comments. But if people are saying, hey, this package is malware, don't install it, it's probably malware, don't install it. Now, not always the case, some people are trolling, but generally the moderation is pretty good in the AUR, and most random people don't have an AUR account. Also, you want to be looking at the votes and popularity. Basically, this tells you if people actually care about the project and think it's a good project. Also, the deletion requests. Now, in this case, it doesn't actually have any requests. But if people are requesting this package to be deleted, there's very likely a reason why that's the case. We also have who made the package and who is currently maintaining it. Right now, that is the exact same person. And not just any random person, the same person who made the project on GitHub. Now, this isn't exactly common. It's not completely uncommon, but a lot of things on the AUR are packaged by some random person in the community. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when something is packaged by the developer of the application, it generally lends it at least a little bit more credibility. And while on that maintainer, you can also check if they're maintaining any other packages. So go to the person's profile and then go to view the packages. And in this case, which is pretty rare actually, they are maintaining a bunch of other packages. Now, I don't know if this is all their own projects or someone else's projects, but either way, they are maintaining a bunch. And usually if someone is maintaining a bunch of packages, they're a lot more credible in the repo. Usually they don't just manage one random piece of malware. Now, while everything so far basically checks out in nothing super sketchy, it doesn't have any comments, so I wouldn't just blindly install it so far. If we're talking about a package like Brave, for example, this is going to have a lot more votes and a lot more comments, especially recent comments. So for a package like this one, you can pretty much assume if you go and read these comments, it is installing Brave, it's not trying to install anything else random, it's not like damaging your system, things like that. But for this one, I would highly recommend doing an examination of the package build. Now, if you have no experience with the terminal, no experience working with shell scripts, things like that, this can seem a little bit overwhelming. But I don't know how you manage to install Arch. I guess you could be using an Arch-based distro, but I really don't think you should be using something like that if you have no experience working with the shell. All a package build is, is a shell script. It's got some variables in it, but all it is, is a shell script. Now, most of the variables are just metadata. It's things like the package name, the package version, the description, things like that, the architecture it's supported on. Basically, the only things you want to pay attention to are the dependencies, the make dependencies, which are the things you need to have installed to build the package, and as we went over before, the source. The SHA here, which you don't see in every single package, is just used to verify that the thing you download is the thing you actually downloaded. Now, the general format for a package build is comments at the top, listing out the maintainers, maybe listing out people who gave patches, then under that variables, and then under that, a bunch of functions. Now, if you see any random applications being called outside of these function calls, do not install it. I don't know why the person wrote that package build like that. It could be completely harmless, but the way they are supposed to be built is the command calls, application calls, whatever you want to call them, only exist inside of the functions. Now, in these functions, it's just a collection of normal CLI commands you might see. So if there's anything that seems kinda sus, like a RM command deleting something that doesn't make really any sense, a hex value being piped into a hex converter and then being run, you can probably assume that something weird is kinda going on. But if there's any commands in here you don't understand, like say, Let's say I don't understand what install does or mess on does. Well, we have documentation. Let's go and run man install. So install 
copy files and set attributes. And let's say I don't know what some of these options mean, like dash O, for example. So dash O is the owner, okay. Dash D. Uh, dash D is this one, directory. Treat all arguments as directory names, create all components of specified directories. And what about meson? So man meson, and this one is a high productivity build system. So this seems to be a way to build applications, I guess. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward and that seems to be pretty much what it's doing. And if for whatever reason, the thing you're working with doesn't have documentation on your system or the documentation isn't that good, well, bring out the search engine. Do a search on the internet and see what you can find. If the command seems totally normal, it's probably totally normal. Now this package we're currently worried about is a source code package, so we have to compile the code locally on our system. But not every package is going to be like that. For example, with Brave, you're going to have a bin version and also a source code version. Now I don't think there is anything inherently worse with installing a binary package as opposed to compiling the source code directly on your system. Some people will argue that installing it from source code is somehow safer than downloading a binary. I would say that makes literally no sense unless you are going through the source code and looking at it line by line but most people probably aren't going to do that when they install a package. So I don't think it really makes any difference. If you verify the source of the source code or the source of the binary, either way, it's going to be fine. But hey, if you want to audit the code, I'm not saying don't do that. It's just not something that most people either have the time to do or have the knowledge to do in an effective way. Now, if everything up to this point seems good, there's nothing off about the package build, there's not really much else you can actually do without going and auditing the code. So, unless there's something wrong in there, we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to use an AUR helper, you can do so manually if you like. I like using Peru, because Peru is going to give me a bit of extra information. So, show me the key and it is going to prompt me to do a review. So if we didn't actually look at the package build before, we can see it in here. We also have the source info, which is basically just a collection of the metadata. Everything in here seems like it's fine. It's only downloading the things that it should be downloading. Okay, I'm gonna go yes. And basically we're gonna go through the installation process. And we're good to go now. So then if we run the application, it should be good. There's two versions of Show Me The Key. I'm going to run the GTK version and let's enable it. And it's doing what it should be doing, basically. Now, except for the cases where a malicious application is masquerading as a totally legitimate one, this is going to catch the vast majority of cases. And that first case, you weren't going to work out anyway because you aren't examining the code. And being realistic, most people aren't going to check over line by line every single package they look at. You probably trust that most packages are going to be safe. But even if you fail to do every single thing, at least do those initial steps on the web interface. And if anything seems slightly off, maybe avoid the package. And if there are any other points I missed, please do let me know in the comment section down below. The AUR is an incredibly useful resource if it is used correctly. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you rely on the AUR? Do you even use Arch Linux? Do you have no idea why you're watching this video? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribes, and Robero Pay, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Proto Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.